We're back with part two of our top 15 things to do in Cape Town. If you missed part one, you can watch it linked above and down in the description. This one is bigger, better, and way more epic. So sit back and enjoy some of the most incredible activities you can do in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. In part one of this video, we went on a boat to see the seals. Today, we're getting into the water with them. If you can swim, we highly recommend that you do it. We've done it before in Plettenberg Bay, and today we're doing it in Cape Town with Cape Town Bucket List. I'm so excited because seals are like puppies of the ocean. They are so playful and cute, and I'm excited, let's go. All the gear is provided by Cape Town Bucket List. Just bring yourself a change of clothes, reef safe sunscreen, and your water camera of choice. It's a short 10 minute fast boat ride out to Dacre Island where over 8,000 seals live. experience was I thoroughly enjoyed it I actually stayed in the entire time Which was they, like an hour. they let you stay in almost an hour long didn't get cold at all those wetsuits worked perfectly just recommend that you are quite a calm and strong swimmer it can be quite rough at times and definitely bring your sea sickness tablets motion yes. sickness tablets are very important when for most boating activities in Cape Town. All boating activities in Cape Town. Don't forget your motion sickness tablets. Other than that, I think it was so cool. It was different from Plateau Bay in the sense that there were tiny wee little babies like this big everywhere and there were big big seals as well. As always, all the links and all the information to do this activity will be down in the description. On to the next. On to the next. And this right here is probably the most exciting and fun thing you can do here in Cape Town that's paragliding. You have to come and do it while you're here. So let's go. That was honestly the most incredible experience of my life. I think I saw a dolphin from the freaking sky and we were on top of the ocean. I was like, Matt, we're on top of the ocean. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. Yes, guys, that was insane. It was actually a little scary. I won't even sugarcoat it. It was scary because you're like on top of the city and you're like, what if we just drop out of the sky now? Well, then we're going to land on a building. You have to do it when you come to Cape Town. It was epic. Thank you so much, Matt, and everyone. That was so, so cool. The best part about Square One Paragliding is that they have a special chair to take less able bodies for a flight too. That means anyone and everyone can and should do this activity regardless of their physical abilities. If you'd like to organize that, head to the website on the screen now. The whole experience is super efficient. You start on Signal Hill, just next to Table Mountain and you end on the promenade in Seapoint. I think that's my favorite activity in Cape Town so far. Woo! I know every activity in this video we've said, guys, you have to do it, you have to book it. This is a must do. But this activity right now is a must do you have to do this when you're here in cape town and that is kayaking with atlantic outlook on this beautiful ocean we have quite an active ocean here in cape town we've got whales dolphins sharks seals all sorts so let's go and see what we can find today i'm so excited we have already spot a bunch of dolphins jumping out of the water a whale that completely breached and a bunch of seals having fun so i think today is going to be a really really good kayak i'm so excited i actually want to die <laughs> Not only 
is this activity a great ocean safari, you also get incredible one-of-a-kind views of Table Mountain and Lion's Head. It's breathtaking. The price is generally 500 Rand per person and the tour is an hour long. We'd suggest going early morning when the ocean is calm and the sea animals are most active. Guys, there's a whale. <gasps> oh! <laughs> We're chasing whales here, guys. Oh, flick! Oh my gosh! <laughs> this is the best day of my life! This is the best day of my life! Oh my god! That was absolutely incredible. On to the next! Welcome to the French Hook Wine Tramp. It is a must do in Cape Town if you're a big fan of wine and really, really good food. <laughs> the charming village of Franchuk is just an hour away from Cape Town. You can call it the wine and culinary capital of the country with a rich little history of its own too. The banning of Protestantism in France in 1685 resulted in over 300 French Huguenots making their way to South Africa. They were given the valley to develop agriculture and some that were from wine producing regions started to lay vineyards for wine production. Today you can use the wine tram to visit some of these historical vineyards. There are over 10 different routes you can try so head over to their website to see which route best suits your taste. We did the pink route but apparently the grey one is great too. Also we suggest spending a night after the tram as you'll probably be under the influence and we don't really want you driving. We can recommend a night at Farm Sanctuary, but there are dozens of hotels and villas to choose from throughout the valley. Part of what makes this experience so incredible is the staff and how well coordinated everything is. It runs so smoothly and everyone is so friendly and helpful. Really, really impressed. Before we carry on with the video, we would like to say a huge thank you to Safety Wing for partnering up with us on this video. We often see travelers starting GoFundMe accounts and asking for public donations when they find themselves in hospital and cannot afford the fees. And they often wish that they signed up for travel insurance before they left. Safety Wing is a travel insurance designed by Digital Nomads, so it's super flexible and affordable and so easy to sign up for. It works just like a Netflix subscription, you can sign up whenever you want and cancel whenever you want. The price starts at 45 USD for four weeks and they cover all sorts of travel and health emergencies while you're on the road. We never travel without safety when covering us for unexpected emergencies, hospitalizations, missed flights and lost luggage. We've personally claimed from them three times during our travels and they were a huge help. We generally sign up at the airport while we're waiting for our flight. It's that easy. We'll link them down in the description and in the first pinned comment. Make sure you guys sign up before your next trip better safe than sorry thank you safety wing for continuously supporting our travels back to the video the next activity is a bucket list activity and something you have to do if this is your first time in South Africa and that is an African Big Five Safari. Heck, I'm South African and it's even a bucket list item for me. While this is not in Cape Town, it is very close and worth the drive if you've never been on a safari before. You don't have to go all the way to the Kruger just to see the Big Five. You can drive a few hours outside of Cape Town to the famous Garden Route. This is the Garden Route Game Lodge. Sticking with accommodation, there are thousands of unique accommodations in and around Cape Town. So if you're looking for some peace and quiet, book a night or two and just take in the African nature all around you. We can recommend Mount Bain Cabin, Sanjika and Farm Sanctuary. Check out our best friend Trav Springer's channel for more videos on unique stays in South Africa. Along with Trav, we'll be hosting a retreat in Cape Town, so head to our website and click on retreats if you're interested in traveling with us. We'll be doing safaris, hiking, wine tasting, table mountain, eating local foods and making friends for life. You won't want to miss this one and all the retreats we host in the future. We'll take care of everything, you just have to get yourself here and have the best 9 days of your life. And the next thing to do is to come and kayak on the canals here in Battery Park, just right near the V&A waterfront. 
usually it's done in the late afternoon the lighting is amazing and it's just a very cool little thing to do there's a lot of history here to learn about i feel like i'm in venice going under the bridge look at the street off yeah oh so beautiful oh, look at the this is actually such a vibe it is so cool to be out here on the water this time of day as the sun is setting it's so peaceful it's very different from the kayaking with the dolphins I must say but yeah just as fun honestly highly recommend totally feel like you're in venice on the canals very picturesque Wow, how lucky are these people that live right here on the water? This so is some peaceful. of the most expensive property in Cape Town. Yeah, one bedrooms are 28,000 Rand a month, starting at. And then to purchase is around 45 million Rand to buy a property. Just a one bedroom here in the marina. Battery Park is not only one of the richest areas in Cape Town, but it is also historically rich. These cannons here are from the original Amsterdam battery emplacement built in 1787. Their role was to protect Cape Town from seaborne aggressors. We did not mention it in the last video, but if you do the red bus tour, you actually also get a chance to do a canal tour here. If being on the water is not your jam though, the park itself has a number of fun things to do for the family from scooter paths, a basketball court, skate park, fitness tracks, shopping and live entertainment. This activity was offered by Cape Town Kayak Adventures. This is a great activity for those rainy days. Head to City Rock in Pardon Island. Entrance is 180 Rand and shoes and harness are 100 bucks. This place is absolutely huge and has walls for people of all climbing abilities. There is also a bouldering section as well as a gym to work out at. There's even a cafe here so you can keep fueled and spend the whole day if you like. Be aware this is quite strenuous but well worth the fun. One of the things we miss most when we're away from home and our favorite thing to do here is to take a nice cold dip in one of the many rock pools. Our favorites are Maiden's Cove, the views of 12 Apostles are actually mind blowing. Make sure you do this one during the week. Saunders Rock Pool is where all the local residents meet up every afternoon and every weekend. The vibe is amazing, it's a great spot to make friends and just soak up the sun on the rocks. There's also Camps Bay Rock Pools and Kalk Bay at St. James's Beach. Cold water submersion for 10 to 20 minutes has great mental and physical benefits and we highly recommend you give it a try. The water temperatures fluctuate around 10 degrees Celsius, so brace yourself. This is one of the seven best botanical gardens in the whole wide world. Welcome to Kirstenbosch. Place. It is so peaceful, the birds, the trees, oh, I love nature. This area spans 528 hectares and has been used and owned by so many different people throughout history. Stone Age weapons and tools were found on the site. The Khoi Khoi then occupied the area for about 2,000 years. The Dutch East India Company then took it over and used the land to harvest timber. This is where the name Kirsten Bosch comes from. It means Kirsten's Forest in Dutch. Eventually, it ended up under the control of a British botanist that decided it would be the perfect land for a botanical garden and so the project began. Today, it belongs to the South African government and only indigenous plants to South Africa are found here, including a protea garden, which is our national flower. What makes these botanical gardens so unique is in summer, they have live music concerts and movie screenings as well. So check their website for all the updates. On a side note, while you're here at Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens, you have to come to the Moyo restaurant right here. They serve traditional South African and African food. And we ordered, of course, a poiki, which is a tiny pot of stew. And while you guys are here, I think, let me give you some suggestions on what you should order on the menu. Definitely a bunny chow, definitely a poiki, definitely rooibos tea to drink, definitely anything on the grill section and then for dessert you are definitely having a malva pudding, no questions asked. That is my favorite dessert in the whole world and this is my favorite meal. In my elements, if you do try it out, put it down in the comments letting us know what you thought of South African food. 
One of our favorite places in the whole city. A drive up Signal Hill is highly recommended for incredible panoramic views of the City Bowl and Robben Island. We love going up to the paragliding launch site on weekends for a sunset picnic. Pro tip, grab a takeaway meal at Giovanni's in Greenpoint or even Woolworths. Bring a bottle of wine and a blanket to sit on and just enjoy the sunset with the locals. There is also the Noon Gun which is a fun thing to do on Signal Hill. We hear it blasting off every day from our apartment, but it's very cool to come here and see it happen. Jesus. <laughs> the noon gun was used to signal whenever a new ship was headed into the harbour, perhaps requiring provisions for the next leg of its journey. It is Cape Town's oldest living tradition and a must see. Now this is an activity if the weather is bad or rainy, you should come to the Two Oceans Aquarium. It is right here at VNA Waterfront and entrance is 235 Rand per person. And if it's your birthday like it is Retties, you get free entrance. Great! <laughs> also, one fantastic thing is all the proceeds from the ticket sales go to helping our oceans and conservation. They've also released over 800 turtles back into the ocean and one of them that was released actually swam all the way from Cape Town to Australia. How amazing! What makes this aquarium one of a kind is that you can go scuba diving in these tanks and even if you are not scuba certified. So you can come here, do a half day course and then they do a guide to dive with you in the tanks here and you can choose which tank you want to go to you can go to the kelp forest one you can do the reverse turtle and stingray one and then i think you can only go with the ragged tooth sharks if you have a diver certificate but how cool is that guys we're totally gonna get our divers in thailand and then come and do this this is so cool Theatre is the oldest independent cinema in South Africa. It was opened in 1949 by Italian aristocracy and was originally used purely for the performing arts. The Labia family came to South Africa in 1917 after being dispatched here by the Mussolini regime. Princess Labia made generous contributions to Cape Town and built the theatre as a way of thanking the South African government for not detaining her family during World War II. Now it's used as a wee little movie theatre where we love watching our movies on a rainy day. In the previous video, we mentioned a few of the hikes to do in Cape Town and the surrounds. But if you'd like to visit a spectacular waterfall, then Crom River Trail is for you. It's a one hour drive outside of Cape Town and we suggest going on a hot summer's day to get the most out of the refreshing pools to swim in. The trail is a moderately challenging route with a few chain sections to climb. Pack a lunch, get your friends together and enjoy the whole day in the sun and water. And try your hand at some high cliff jumps too. This next activity unfortunately only applies if you're visiting in the summer months from October to April and that's to join one of the many activities that take place on the beaches and promenade. On Mondays basically everyone meets and goes blading and skating from one point to the other. Tuesdays are for yoga with show up and flow on 2nd beach at Clifton. Wednesdays a 5 km run with the running lake club. They run all the way along the Clifton road which is arguably one of the most beautiful runs in the world. Thursdays we recommend you pop down to Clifton first for some beach volleyball, it's such a vibe. Fridays don't really have anything as far as we're aware, but we'd recommend you walk down the promenade for sunset and grab a bite at the Vibe Mojo Market. Well, that's it, our top 15 things to do in Cape Town part two. If you missed part one, it will be linked down in the description for you. There are some gems in that one, especially if it's your first time in Cape Town. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.